When your expert has arrived, the first thing you want to do is remove the packing slip from the outside of the box. You'll find your packing list or invoice, easy to install supplement, and height chart. After you open the box, remove the carrying cases and pull out the instruction manual, which is on the right side. Open the manual to page 2 to review the box contents. Additional items that are sold separately are the tape measure, the stud finder, the magnetic level, the hex key set. The large tubes are your main pole pieces. The A pole is heavier and it's labeled dash 0040. The B pole is labeled dash 0050. Your 250 millimeter extension labeled dash 0250 comes attached to one of your 200 millimeter X joints. The extension is the shiny chrome or gold piece the X joint is the dull metal piece with the machined cut on the side. The 125 millimeter extension is labeled dash 0125 and comes attached to your 180 millimeter X joint and top adapter. The smallest tube labeled XJ is your second 200 millimeter X joint, which you will use to connect your two main pole pieces. You'll also find the dome, base, and tool kit, which includes the two hex keys. Now that you're familiar with your box contents, the next step is to measure your ceiling height. Please note, if you're installing it on carpet, you'll have to add a half to two inches, depending on how thick your carpet is. Next, locate the beam or joist in your ceiling using a stud finder. You will want to put the expert up so the dome is centered directly under one beam. Our ceiling here is 8 foot 4. Refer to the printed out height chart so you will know what extensions, if any, are needed. At this ceiling height, we will only use the two main pole pieces and the 250 millimeter extension. Now it's time to get familiar with how the X joint works. Grab the single X joint and your large hex key. The X joint expands to hold your pull pieces together and contracts to separate them. We can see that our X joint is contracted. To expand the X joint, put the short end of the large hex key completely into the X joint screw. Turn the hex key clockwise and you'll notice the machine cut opening. It is very important to alternate between the screws for the X joint to expand correctly. To contract the X joint, you'll want to turn the hex key counterclockwise and the machine cut will close. Contract the other two X joints and remove them from the pole extensions. To assemble your pole, loosen the static spinning screws at the very bottom of a pole with a small hex key. Use the small hex key to tighten the hex screws lined up with the X's etched on the base. Unscrew the adjuster cover, which is below the three hex screws, by turning clockwise and let it fall to the base. Put a contracted 200 millimeter X joint into a pole, lining the screws of the X joint with the hole on the upper part of a pole. Make sure that the center locking pins on the X joint are fitted in the rounded slots of the A pole. 
Now attach B pole, lining the screws of the X joint with the hole on the lower part of B pole. Make sure there is no gap between the pole pieces. Put the short end of the large hex key completely into the X joint screw. Turn the hex key clockwise until you just feel pressure and repeat this process on the other screw. Once again, it is important to alternate between the screws for the X joint to expand correctly. Now, lay the pole on the ground and attach the necessary extensions for your ceiling height. We're using the 250 millimeter extension with the 200 millimeter X joint. We put the contracted X joint into the top of the main B pole. You may need to push the two pole pieces together as you tighten the screws. Now slide the top adapter on the top extension needed for your ceiling height. The smallest extension should always go on the top. Next, slide the dome on the top adapter. Use the small hex key and loosen the three adjuster locking screws at the bottom of the A-pole. Lift the pole upright. Turn the entire pole counterclockwise. You'll notice more of the adjuster rod becoming exposed at the bottom and the dome getting closer to the ceiling. Keep turning until the dome is barely tight to the ceiling. Make sure the pole is level. Magnetic levels are the easiest to use by walking around the entire pole. If it is unlevel, adjust the pole by moving the lower part of the pole and base. Keep turning the pole until the dome is firmly tight to the ceiling. You do not want to over tighten, but the dome should not move. Line up the three adjuster locking screws at the bottom of A pole with the three flat sections of the adjuster rod. It may be necessary to turn the pole slightly to align properly. Be careful, if the screws are tightened on the threaded sections of the adjuster rod, threading damage may occur. Raise adjuster cover and turn counterclockwise to tighten. Make sure it threads properly. Now you are ready to use your pole. If you like to use it on spinning mode, you simply use the small hex key and turn counterclockwise to loosen the two static spinning screws right above the base. Remember, to switch back to stationary mode, you'll need to tighten these screws aligned with the X's on the base. If you are planning to leave your pole up for an extended period of time, make sure your three adjuster locking screws are always tight to maintain pole stability and clean your pole with rubbing alcohol. To disassemble your expert, make sure the pole is on stationary mode. Unscrew the adjuster cover, which is right below the three hex screws, by turning clockwise and let it fall to the base. Loosen the three adjuster locking screws by turning counterclockwise with small hex key. Turn the entire pole clockwise to loosen the dome from the ceiling. Lay entire pole on the ground, remove dome and top adapter. Use large hex key to contract all X joints by turning hex key counterclockwise. Then separate all pole pieces from the X joints. Raise the adjuster cover Use the small hex key to loosen the two static spinning screws and remove the base. Pack your pole in the carrying cases, putting the large pole pieces on the edges and the smaller pieces in between.